No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that human affairs were being watched from the timeless worlds of space. The Martians, as they are referred to, are a spacefaring extraterrestrial species which engaged in colonization efforts on planet Earth in the early 20th century. While the fact that they launched themselves from Mars is unquestionable, there have been doubts whether that planet represents their actual homeworld. After the failure of their mission to populate Earth, the creatures have redirected their efforts to Venus, with presumable successful results. The Martians are roughly bear-sized, land-based, cephalopod-like creatures. Their bodies are massive, and they appear to have no skeleton. They move by crawling around with their long, whip-like tentacles. The entire body of the Martians consists of a head and tentacles, with the head being vastly inflated, with a pair of disproportionately large black eyes and a mouth shaped like the letter V. A hearing membrane is located on the back of the head, but it appears to be useless on Earth's comparatively thick atmosphere. The Martians, however, are still capable of communicating with each other thanks to their limited telepathic abilities. Their appearance is rarely seen though, as they are most usually found inside their huge tripods and other machines which they control from within, using them like an artificial body. Though the physiology of the Martians is not explained, they appear to breathe oxygen and can take advantage of the increased abundance of this substance in Earth's atmosphere compared to that of Mars. To a certain point that this counterbalances the negative effects that the increased gravitational pull of Earth has over their metabolism. Most of the internal body of a Martian consists of its huge brain, which grants them with an advanced intellect. They do, however, have no digestive system and instead survive by transplanting the blood of other creatures directly inside their own veins, which of course gives them the nutrients they need. Back on Mars, the creatures would take sustenance by consuming the blood of a native humanoid life form. When invading Earth, they of course switched their food source to humans. Interestingly, there was an ecological abnormality on Mars. It resulted in absolutely no infectious bacteria, which caused the Martian body to have no immunological system and no other biological defenses against germs. Perhaps because of their oversimplified biology in regard to digestive process, Martians need no sleep and are also able to direct practically all of their energy to neurological processes. The origins of the species are not 100% clear cut. They are thought to be an ancient species from a dying planet. The origins of the Martians are still up for debate, however their curious anatomy and physiology appears to be the result of an increased evolutionary tendency to continuously augment the brain and hands in expense of the remaining body systems, ultimately resulting in a cephalopod-like creature, almost nothing but head and fingers. The question of whether this evolution was natural or artificial, or potentially a combination of both, is disputed. However, as is the question of whether or not they are truly native to the planet of Mars, or were simply using it as a launching base to reach Earth. It has been theorized that the Martians' asexual physiology, completely devoid of food processing, sleep, and mating concerns, is what ultimately resulted in their complete lack of emotions, as humans commonly understand them. They are, in many ways, a dark reflection of humanity itself, an image of what we may evolve into ourselves if we fail to live peacefully and sustainably. The Martians are extremely focused and productive creatures, for which work is practically the only concern, 24 hours a day, and they are extremely persistent in eliminating prey. They work fast in groups and appear to have limited telepathic abilities, which could conceivably represent a very archaic form of a hive mind. Additionally, they have a total disregard for organisms whom are technologically inferior to themselves, perceiving them as food or simply pests laying waste to them without a pang of remorse. 
In fact, it is not too far-fetched to speculate that this lack of respect for other species could well be the reason their original planet is so barren. They used up their own resources without thinking about the consequences. In fact, while they eliminated all deadly viruses on their homeworld, they had failed to defend themselves from Earth's diseases. For all their technological mastery, they had detached themselves from the natural world and underestimated the power of nature, ultimately meaning their invasion of Earth was a failure. As stated, they are incredibly technologically advanced. The Martians' weapons are referred to as heat rays and are able to disintegrate anything by heat in a range of several meters. They also use the so-called black smoke, a dense substance which kills instantly if inhaled, but which is rendered harmless in water. Despite being a gas, the smoke is so heavy it behaves almost like a liquid and remains mostly on ground level, thus posing no threat to the Martians standing on their tall tripod machine. One peculiarity of the Martian technology is that they appear to have never developed wheels, since all of their machines are based on mechanical limbs instead. Alternatively, they may have utilised wheels in the past, and newer technology rendered them obsolete. Another interesting thing to consider when taking a look at the Martian's technology is the design aspect. The design itself could be seen to be a direct reflection of how the creatures view themselves. Although humans are labelled as having an inflated ego, it is seldom that we design moving vehicles in our own image. The Martians, however, have the tripod vehicles which closely resemble themselves. They inspired their own designs. That paired with their view of humanity and every other living being in the universe gives a strong case for their inflated ego and godlike mentality. However, of course, the tripod vehicles are a technological advantage over human vehicles, so this argument does not necessarily hold that much weight. But it could have been one of the reasons that H.G. Wells described them as such in his novel. The Martians on a whole are an interesting creature to analyse. What is their ultimate aim? What is their purpose? Why do they do what they do? As mentioned, they aren't thought to originate from Mars at all. Though I have called them Martians throughout this video, the idea is that they simply used Mars as a pit stop for their campaign against Earth. Which makes you wonder, is this a now nomadic species? Crossing the galaxy from planet to planet, consuming all natural resources and then moving on. Their food supply is other beings, they are almost parasitic. If they do not consume other creatures, they cannot survive. So it stands to reason that they would have to continue this process until they eventually consume all other life in the galaxy and universe, or of course, some far superior race destroys them. Did these beings evolve this way, or were they created as some kind of bioweapon? Because a creature that has to dominate to survive is a being that will do whatever it takes. It's instinctual, nature built into their very flesh, almost. The Martians from The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells are an interesting creature to explore and go into, especially the philosophical aspects of looking at them from the technological to nature perspective. Whether their technological advances rendered them an ultimate failure, and as mentioned there is the possible dark reflection onto humanity itself. The interesting notion that if we were to fail to live peacefully and sustainably, this is ultimately what we would become. But looking at it from a purely fantastical perspective, The War of the Worlds is a hugely, hugely impactful story. The movies have unfortunately never done them ultimate justice, and it is a property which is ripe for a reimagining and another adaptation, I believe. But what did you guys think to The War of the Worlds, or H.G. Wells' original novel? As always, please do let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And if you did enjoy this video, then please do give it a like and hit that subscribe button to stay notified of all my future content. If you like what I do here on the channel and you want to support me, plus get access to exclusive content, then please do check out my Patreon page via the link in the description box. If you want to interact with me on social media, then please do check out my Twitter and Instagram over at Mr. H Reviews. As always, I've been Mr. H, and until next time, I will catch you in the comment section.